one of the key things in psychiatry we often find is we tend to use broad labels, for example, antidepressants, as if it's one class. And I think with tricyclic antidepressants as well, we tend to use the word tricyclic antidepressant, two words, that kind of potentially misses the nuance. So could you sort of give us an understanding of some of the misconceptions around tricyclics and take us through some of the nuances of these medications? I'd love to. That might take more than half an hour. <laughs> but the first, the first thing I'm saying regularly now is that people must try to get out of the mentality of using the term tricyclic antidepressants because it's pharmacologically it's a meaningless category they're such a diverse group of drugs i think especially i believe a lot of your audience are of the younger generation um i mix with a lot of the older generation i keep saying to my clever young assistants we're yesterday's men. What we want to do is influence tomorrow's men, not yesterday's men. History. Over and over again, we, we forget how much we can learn from history. Uh, and of course, when these drugs were introduced as a result of the changes in, in, organic, in organic chemistry and the discovery of petrochemical dyes and aniline and methylene blue, methylene blue is very close to what oh, wrong side. Uh, on the right side, uh, very close to my heart, as some people may know. People forget that when these drugs were first brought to market and, and the invest, uh, investigated and, and, and uh, the pharmacological techniques that were used to investigate them were really rather crude. And so many of them got completely misclassified. So, for instance, if you were going to classify them now uh, using uh, what I'm very pleased to see is beginning to get a bit more traction, and I've been talking about for quite some years now, neuroscience-based nomenclature. I really plead with everybody to get in the habit of um, thinking and acting in, in terms of neuroscience-based nomenclature. And the tricyclics are such an excellent example of how important that is, because their different effects, and I'm sure most of your audience uh, know a bit about all the different receptors they affect, and it's explicated in detail in that tricyclic antidepressant paper, which is, just in case anybody's wondering, I mean, it's over 16 years old now, that paper, but it's the only major review paper on that subject in the literature. I, I got the clever young people to, to check to make sure nobody had updated it or anything, and, and it, it remains the, the classic paper in the literature. It's now been cited... 700 times. I'm very proud of that. If you look at the data in that paper, it, it'll bring home the fact that these drugs have such diverse pharmacological properties. So, for instance, at one extreme, you've got doxepin, which remains to this day the most antihistamine, H1 antagonist, uh, available for use in humans. In fact, I don't believe there's even an experimental drug that's more potent on a milligram for milligram basis. Uh, and if you treat it as a specific H1 antagonist, and it deserves to be called a specific H1 antagonist, because the ratio of that potency compared to any other potency it has is, you know, 50, 100 times higher. And once a drug gets 10 to 20 times selective in terms of its uh, human transporter affinity potency, uh, you tend to regard it as being pretty selective. Um, so really, it, it's a selective antihistamine. At the other end of the extreme, you've got, say, desipramine, or perhaps protriptyline, but there's not so much data on that, but desipramine, which is an extraordinarily potent noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. Um, I, I think, look at, look at the data in the paper, 10 times more uh, potent than I think the next most potent drug, and, and a, 100 times more potent than many of the other uh, so-called tricyclic antidepressants. So, yes, an extraordinarily diverse group of drugs. And the moment somebody says the tricyclic antidepressants and then makes a statement, you can absolutely guarantee the statement's wrong. <laughs>